So he comes to the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he says, according to one narration, "Alimni mimma allamak Allah." Teach me from what Allah taught you. And he said this over and over, because he didn't hear the Messenger's response immediately, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He assumed maybe the Prophet didn't hear him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Now the Prophet wasallam right now is engaged in this conversation, which seems like a rare occasion. It doesn't really happen often that he gets the ear of some of these big leaders all at one time, and they're actually listening, right? So there are a few strategic problems here. One problem is one of the complaints that has always been the case of the leaders of kufr, the leaders of disbelief, not just with our messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam, also in previous messengers' times, is that why should we accept this man when the low lives, these the scum of society, these peasants, they hang around him, and this is one of the reasons they would say that we can't associate ourselves with you because you hang out with the lower class, you know these poor. These weak, these powerless, the oppressed, they, they seem to be the ones lining up with you. We can't be seen associated, associating with them because it takes away from our elite status. So you want to talk to us? Talk to us separately. Right? We're not going to come to you. you you're going to have to come to us. Right? So it, this seems like that situation where the Messenger of Allah is actually gone to them. Right? Da'wah is to invite someone to you. It literally, it means invitation. But tabligh is to get the message out. And this part of the Messenger's work was what? He's going out to them. He's going out to them. Now, in this scenario, one of the problems is they'll so much as see Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum, and that's enough. They'll invalidate the da'wah, they'll walk away. We don't want to be seen in the presence of this guy. Another issue here is the Messenger of Allah وسلم, is finally getting somewhere. If he turns to this Sahabi right now and addresses his concerns, which can wait, it's not like he's going anywhere, he will be back, and he's, he's a true believer, he's a devout follower, so his response can wait. What cannot wait is this golden opportunity for getting the message to these people who are finally listening. So if you look at it from the Messenger's point of view, وسلم, there's nothing wrong in what he does. There's nothing wrong in what he does. The other thing to note here is, we know that oh, Ibn Umm Maktoum is blind. So when the Messenger frowns, وسلم, you know when you frown at somebody, then uh, you can only get offended if what? You see it, you see it. So the, 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 the idea of being rude, or being upset, or being disturbed at someone, is something visual. In another indication of the innocence of the Messenger of Allah and his character, that he didn't say, you know how in, in, in regards to our parents, Allah has, says, فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفْ right? Don't even say uff to them, don't even let them hear some frustration. We don't hear the Messenger of Allah expressing any fr- frustration verbally, rather we Learn about him expressing frustration on his face. And we'll learn more about the nature of the word Abasa in a moment, inshallah. And he turns away slightly. Now when he turns away, you know, trying to finish off the conversation he's having with the Quraysh, or with, with some of the leaders of the Kuffar, can the Sahabi notice him turning away? No, he can't notice that either. So first of all, understand he did not offend a believer. He did not offend a believer at all. So then if this is no, there's no problem, why are these ayat coming down? This is absolutely critical to understand. You see, you and I have a standard Allah has set for us for the Muslim. Then there's a higher standard for the mu'min. Then there's a higher standard for who? The muhsin, right? There's a higher standard. And then none of these can compare to the standard Allah has for a messenger of Allah. And of them, you can never compare your standards with the standards of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah azza wa is very, very, very sensitive to every intricate mannerism, every smallest, minutest gesture of our messenger sallallahu alayhi wa Keep this standard in mind. And just to give you some idea of that elevated status, that standard. For us, there are the five prayers. For us, there are the five prayers. When Allah speaks to His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, He mandates him for qiyam al-layl. قُمِ اللَّيْلَ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا نِصْفَهُ وَمِنْ قُسْ مِنْهُ قَلِيلًا Stand in the night. It's fi'il al-amr. It's a command. He commands His Messenger to qiyam al-layl half the night. Half the night at a minimal. Right? Or even some more sometimes when you have the opportunity. And recite the Qur'an in a slow rhythmic tone. Is this a standard for us? No. It's not mandated upon us, but it's mandated upon him sallallahu alayhi wa Right? Similarly, the work of da'wah, we could say, yes, it's something important, we should do it. We should do it whenever we have an opportunity. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when does he have to do the work of da'wah? All the time. He has no break. He can't stop. He's constantly to go and deliver the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So there's really no comparison. Now, keeping that in mind, keeping that in mind, understand that the messengers, take the messenger Musa alayhi salam for example, Allah commanded him, Allah commanded him to, to come and meet him at, you know, in the valley, and he came early, out of zeal. They're so excited about the mission that Allah has given them, they want to make progress in it quickly. 
Similarly, when Messenger of Allah وسلم, was given Qur'an, he was in such zeal to re- receive that revelation, he would try to memorize it quickly. This is from the zeal of the Messenger وسلم. So Allah had to reveal an ayah calming him down. لا تحرك به لسانك لتعجل به. Don't rush your tongue to acquire the Qur'an quickly. Relax. We have taken ourselves to compile the Qur'an for you. إِنَّ عَلَيْنَا جَمْعَهُ وَقُرْآنَهُ فَإِذَا قَرَأْنَاهُ فَاتَّبِعْ قُرْآنَهُ Right? So Allah Azza wa Jal took that responsibility, telling the Messenger, it is not your problem. But see, the Messengers are so concerned, they have such a huge responsibility upon them, alayhim salam and most of all the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, who you have to understand, he's not just giving da'wah to the Quraysh, he's not just giving da'wah to the Makkans. What this man does in his few years of worldly life, he understands has implications for all of humanity to come. Because there are no more messengers coming. So everything he does, he's got the, literally the weight of the world on his shoulders. You have to understand this, right? He's got the weight of the world on his shoulders. And so he understands that giving the, when these leaders, if even any one of them has an inkling of Islam, how much strength Islam will gain. How much of a, of a good that will come, that Islam will bring. So he's constantly concerned about taking the mission to the next step, making sure that it reaches certain milestones. And in this, this was a golden opportunity.